Hey everybody, it's Bobby Flay, and today uh, we're going to make a dish that is really, I have to say, one of my go-tos. It's probably a go-to for lots of people. It's penne pasta with a tomato sauce and some fresh basil, some parsley, some Parmigiano-Reggiano cheese. I'm gonna add a little bit of ricotta. I mean, basically, it's pasta with tomatoes and basil. This is something you can serve for a really great lunch or Sunday dinner or like a big family style dinner for your family. And there's very few things, in my opinion, that are as satisfying as this dish. How you actually finish it is really gonna be key. Um, a lot of times you'll see in restaurants where they, um, they make the pasta, they put the pasta in the bowl and they put the sauce on top. Like, I have to say like, um, I think that's the worst idea ever, only because you're not dressing the pasta itself. So we're gonna, sh we're gonna show you, I'm gonna show you how to cook the pasta, cook the sauce, meld it all together so that every single bite is exactly the same and it's perfectly seasoned and you'll never wanna stop eating this dish, I promise you. But you're gonna get it right, okay? All right, so the first thing we're gonna we're going to do is we're gonna make our sauce. Now this is something, you can make this days ahead of time. In fact, a lot of people will tell you like, you know, the tomato sauce gets better as it sits in the refrigerator, you know, for a day or two. And it's probably true. But again, really, really simple. Uh, three ingredients, some onions, some garlic, and some canned tomatoes. And we're gonna start by getting our onions and garlic all prepped up. So I, uh, I, I take the back of my knife and I break up the cloves. And then once I have the, whoops, once I have the cloves, I have to get the skin off the cloves as well. So you've probably seen me, if you've watched Beat Bobby Flay, you've seen this a thousand times, but I'll show you one more time. So I take the, uh, the side of the knife, I crush it with my hand, and it actually helps to separate the, uh, the skin from the, uh, from the meat of the garlic. And you just kind of go in there and just peel the skin off. You see how quickly it just kind of peels away? And then we can start chopping up our, our beautiful fresh garlic. I always say like everything good starts with onions and garlic. I think I'm gonna make a t-shirt that says that. Because I really believe it, especially anything savory. Especially Italian food, for sure. I've spent a bunch of time in, um, in Italy. Rome was one of my favorite places. And um, just thinking about like, uh, when I was, I lived in Rome for about six weeks last year and I would go to Italian uh, language class every day and which was totally fun and, and obviously I learned a lot about Italian language even though I can't speak any of it really. But the thing I would always look forward to would be like lunch after class. And it would always involve like a pizza, a pasta, you know, or both. You know, some like great arugula salad because I was trying to be healthy. And um, an awesome bottle of Italian wine, like maybe from the Campania region, like a little mineral wine. But the, you know, the pasta is always the highlight. I mean, I mean, I always say like pasta is like, it might be the perfect food, you know, because it just blends all the, all the things that you want in one bowl surrounded by this beautiful pasta, olive oil, Parmigiano cheese, fresh basil. I, I, could, I could just basically eat it every single day. All right, so. We, we, uh, we, we chopped the garlic, and, and if you notice, I took a little bit of salt and just put the salt on top of the garlic, and that's gonna act as an abrasive. So when I turn my knife, and I'll show you how I do that, I crush the salt and the garlic together, and the salt really works as an abrasive to make a garlic paste. Okay, so we have the garlic. Now we need some onion. So we're gonna take the, uh, the tops off the onion. I'm gonna cut it in half. And I don't need a ton of onion for this. I'm probably gonna use maybe a quarter of the onion total. So I'm gonna chop the onion. Now I know this sort of, this sort of looks you know, quick and fancy here. Um, it's really the only way I know how to cut an onion because I've been doing it my whole life in my professional kitchens. But the idea is that you make slices down one side, okay, and you don't cut all the way through so that actually the, uh, the onion stays intact. And then you make slices sort of the crossways. And then when you slice down, it automatically makes diced onion for you, just like that, okay? Now if you have some sort of coarse pieces, you can just kind of go over it with your knife. And ultimately, you'll have you know, diced onion no matter what, as long as you keep doing this. And you know, 
it, this is a really good method to have where you, where you put your, your fingers on top, of the, on top of the knife and you just kind of rock back and forth, okay? That's the technique. You don't want to do this, you know, where you're sort of out of control. You just want a very short spurts with the knife like this and you, and you keep the knife down by using your, your fingers on top and then you rock back and forth, all right? All right, so now we have onions and garlic. Now we can really cook, all right? So, uh, I fight with Jada about this all the time. She only cooks with olive oil. I think that cooking with olive oil um, can sometimes be a mistake only because there's, because it's so thick and viscous and fruity, like if you cook with it, it will change the, um, the flavor of it. And it doesn't have a high smoking point. So if it gets too hot, it can actually get a little bit bitter. So just to sweat the onions and the garlic, I use a little bit of canola oil. It's a lighter oil, okay? My pan's a little hot, ooh, that's okay. My pan's a little hot, we won't let that cool down. And I can open my can of tomatoes while well, I'm letting that cool for a second. See, there's no, there's no reason to panic in the kitchen. My pan was too hot because I was talking to you for probably way too long, but that's okay. And um, my pan got a little too hot. I put the oil in there. Now, if that was olive oil, I'd have to start over because it would just make the olive oil too bitter. But luckily, I'm using something light. You know, vegetable oil, canola oil, something along those lines works really nice. I'm just going to let it cool down because I don't want to put too much color on my onions and garlic. And I'm going to show you how I do that. But I have to have my tomatoes ready because the tomatoes are actually going to cool down the pan when I'm ready to go, okay? All right, so, all right, that's cooled down a little bit. So, all right, you ready? So onions, a little garlic, mix it around, tomatoes. Crush the tomatoes a little bit with a potato masher. All right, just so they get a little bit crushed. So now you can see it's starting to boil a little bit here. And then you want to turn it down to a simmer for about, I don't know, 20 minutes or so, just so that the tomatoes start to soften, the onions and the garlic and the, and the tomatoes become friends, they flavor each other, and you're making tomato sauce. I mean, this is really basically it. Now we're gonna cook our penne. To cook dry pasta, you need water and an abundance of it. So you, so you wanna make sure that when your pasta is rolling in there, that there has tons of room. Um, you, don't wanna, you don't want to, um, and don't forget, the pasta is actually going to expand. So if I'm gonna make this much pasta to start with, it's probably gonna make this much pasta. I mean, think about it that way. So you want a lot of water so that it can really kind of roll in there. And then a lot of salt. Have you ever been in the ocean and you get hit by a wave and you get a mouthful of, uh, of, of salt water? That's what this should taste like, okay? You want it to taste like the sea. Okay, you have to make sure that this is a rolling boil. So it's gotta really be boiling, all right? Then you can put the pasta right into the water. And you give it a quick stir so that it doesn't stick. Remember, there's lots of starch in the pasta. And then, you know, you make sure you leave it on high so it comes back to a boil. And penne, the shape that we're using today, is probably gonna take about somewhere between eight and 10 minutes. I usually take mine out, like if it says, like if the box says nine minutes, I take mine out in eight minutes because I want it to be al dente, right to the tooth. You want a little bit of bite to the pasta. And also, it's gonna continue to cook until it's stone cold. And never take your pasta and put it under the water to cool it down. You're getting rid of all the starch, you're getting rid of all the flavor. So you really wanna undercook it a little bit because it's gonna continue to cook as it's sitting there. It's that simple, all right? So just take a minute off whatever the box says and you'll be fine. That's probably a good rule of thumb. All right, the sauce. You want the tomatoes to cook until they soften and then you really crush them and pulverize them into the sauce. And I don't put this in a food processor, I don't puree this. I like my tomato sauce to be nice and rustic. I want it to have a lot of texture to it. I don't want it to be too chunky. Like, I don't want, like, big pieces of tomato. 
but I want small pieces of tomato running through it. I don't want it to be a complete tomato puree. Your Italian grandmother would not like that. Okay, it looks beautiful. And you can see the texture is beautiful, it's nice and smooth. If your sauce gets a little thick, you can take a little bit of the pasta water and just put it in there. Just a tiny bit, it, it kind of brings it back to the texture that you want. You can always use some pasta water to thin out the, um, the tomatoes. And the pasta water works really nicely because it has the starchiness of the, of the pasta to actually kind of bring everything together. It kind of glues it all together, it's really nice. All right, so we have some fresh basil. Basil is probably my favorite herb. It's probably the most used fresh herb. Um, but again, there's a reason for that. I mean, it's just so incredibly fragrant. And you don't want to chop this too much. What I like to do is to, is, to, is to kind of tear the basil like this. This is the proper way to do it. And I put a lot of it in. It always drives me crazy, like on top of like a margarita pizza or like a penne with, with tomato and basil. Like they put like two little like pieces of basil on there. I, I always want more, I want, I want like five times more basil because it just makes it all taste so much better. All right. I like to put a little bit of parsley in there as well, just to kind of break up the, uh, the really fragrant flavor of the, of, of the basil. I don't want it to take over, but at the same time, I want it to be nice and herbaceous. So, so for, the, for the parsley, I just take the leaves and I just coarsely chop it, okay? So we have the basil, we have the parsley, we have, uh, we have some Parmigiano-Reggiano cheese here. Now, you know, all I can say is get the freshest and, and most genuine Parmigiano-Reggiano cheese you can find. It's really worth it. It, takes, it, ma it makes such a big difference. So we have some Parmigiano here that have, that's already grated that I'm gonna put into the pasta and I'm gonna finish it with, uh, with some freshly grated Parmigiano. You can see it says Reggiano right there. So that's how you know that is legit, okay? Not cheap, but a little bit goes a long way, okay? And you need this. And then I have some ricotta cheese here, right? Which is like a fresh farmer's cheese almost. And I, I'm, I'm a ricotta fan. Um, I like ricotta more, more than most people like ricotta, I think. Um, and so I'm gonna put a little dollop on top. You don't have to use this, but again, it's gonna lend a, a nice creaminess to the, to the dish. All right, the sauce is looking really nice. So the only way to check your pasta is to check your pasta. Still, at, it's like, I'm gonna say like 45 more seconds and we're out of here, okay? 45 more seconds. And don't forget, as I said in the beginning, I'm gonna cook the pasta in the sauce still. So the pasta is being cooked in, it, in that salty water, then it's gonna go into this hot bath of this tomato sauce and it's gonna continue to cook. Then we're gonna garnish it. It's gonna sit in the bowl for a minute or two. It's gonna continue to cook. So by the time your guest or you eat your, that dish, the pasta should be perfection. All right, I'm gonna take the pasta out now. And like I said, before you get rid of the pasta water, save some, just in case you need it, okay? Just need a little bit. Just, we'll, we'll, check, we'll check on the texture. All right, so, whoops. Pasta's ready. All right, so we're gonna put the pasta right in the middle of the sauce. All right. Now, very important. This is a step that very few people do, but it's needed. We've now introduced the pasta, even though you cooked it in salt water, we've now introduced the pasta into this new thing. It's this new, it's this, it's this bath of tomato sauce. Every layer needs to be seasoned. So we're gonna season the pasta with salt and pepper, the pasta right on top. We're gonna take some of the Parmigiano, the grated Parmigiano, season the pasta as well, okay? And now, in the restaurant, I would just pick this up and do, the, do those fancy flips, but because I'm teaching you at home, I'm just gonna take a wooden spoon and just move the pasta into the sauce. And that Parmigiano is gonna actually help, in, help to thicken the sauce and will help the, uh, the, the, the sauce stick to the, to the pasta itself. But you definitely wanna cook the pasta for a minute, okay? And 
When you go to Italy or you go to a great Italian restaurant in the United States, you'll notice that the sauce is literally just coating the pasta. It's not sitting in this big, like, you know, uh, pool of sauce. You're just using the sauce to coat the pasta itself. And don't forget, the pasta's still cooking, right? Still cooking. A little bit more Parmigiano. Then we take, at the very end, is when you add the fresh herbs. Only right before you, you're getting ready to plate it. So I have some of my torn basil, my parsley. I'm gonna put some chili flakes in here because I can't help myself. You don't have to do that, but I, of course, love a little bit of heat in my pasta. A little bit of extra virgin olive oil because we're not cooking it. This is just at the end. And before you put this in the bowl, you gotta taste it. It's good, a little more cheese. A couple more herbs. And a little more black pepper. All right. We're good to go. And you can see the herbs are staying nice and fresh because we're just putting them in the very last second. So I'm gonna take our block of cheese, just grate some Parmigiano right on top. You can see how the sauce is just coating the pasta itself. I mean, how could you not want to eat this? And then I'm gonna take a little bit of the ricotta. Let's put it right in the middle. And I always do this thing with ricotta where I take a little olive oil and put it right on top of the ricotta. It just wakes it up a little bit. And then we have a couple more herbs here. Mangiare. Penne and tomato and basil with a little bit of ricotta cheese. I mean, listen, Sunday night, just put this in the middle of the table, home run.